Hello there. Somebody sent me an email asking how to change their logo color to make it either black or white, a solid black or white. Now normally I create all logos in Adobe Illustrator, So, but first I'm going to show you how to do it in Photoshop because I know a lot of photographers create their logos in Photoshop or really are just a little bit more comfortable using Photoshop altogether. So I'm taking my logo designed by Sean Lofi, which I just redesigned, so I'm very happy about this. And um, I'm opening up my Illustrator file in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it out. Okay, I just want the logo. And I have a white background on it. You can see this right now. So I'm having, um, I have two layers, one with the logo on it. That's this one right here on a transparent layer because I opened up a vector file in Photoshop. And then I put a white background on it so just so you can be able to see it. Now I'm going to double click on the layer that has the logo and you're going to have a layer style palette open up. Go to color overlay and it automatically will select red because that's the default color. I'm just going to double click on this uh, red um, box and I'm going to select a new color. You can go by this little chart, it's like a gradient of color and you can select your black just by moving your mouse over to the very far corner. Um, and the ha the color number for web is complete zeros, five, um, six zeros across the board. Actually, it's one, two, three, four, but yeah, six zeros. If you want to make it white, just go to the opposite end of the spectrum on the gradient and click on the white. So you have a black version and a white version. And just click OK. Click OK. And now you have a version in a solid black logo. Now to save it, just go to File, to Save As. And you can save this as um, a PNG file so you can use it on the internet. And it'll still have that transparent background so you won't have to worry about a white block being around it. And so, say, so go to Format and, collect, and select PNG and choose the file name that you want. Um, the name of your logo underscore B BW um, or black so that you have an, an option um, you can know exactly what you're looking for and then hit save and it's as simple as that now if you want to save it as a white version um, you do the same thing you go to the layers palette and the selection for the color overlay is already there just double click on it and we're going to change the color from black to white so you click on the um, black box or the color box in the blending mode and select white and that's F, six F's if you want solid white right here and click OK click OK again and just to make sure that you have this in um, in uh, the posing color I'm gonna make the background color visible and make it black so I just hit option delete and I filled my background with black so now you can see that your logo is now in, in the reverse color of white. So just turn off the eye so that you don't see this background color and go to file uh, go to file to save as and now rename it your logo name underscore white. And you do this with every color. So if you want to do a solid red or a solid blue, you can do the same thing, just select your blue color. And I'm going to save this as a PNG as well and do save. Click on that. You can also, if you know the Pantone color of your logo, you can select that as well. So we're going to double click on the color overlay again, click on the color box, and we're going to go into color libraries and select our Pantone color. Now I use warm gray, uh, 1 and 11, so I'm going to select that, and it's a matter of finding it, it's right above cool gray. So I'm going to select warm gray 11 by double clicking on it. And you can see that now my logo has changed from white to the warm gray. And I'm going to go to select OK now that I've selected my Pantone color. And you can pick San, uh, Pantone solid uncoated or coated. It really doesn't matter unless you go to print. And if you want it to be a matte color, you select solid uncoated. If you want it to be, if, if you're going to use coated, um, sorry, glossy or um, a matted a color that has a little bit of, a, of a, a shine to it then you'd want to use a solid coated color because that ink color then is going to match the style of printing that you're going to do and this is something you can talk about with your printer it gets very complicated they can explain it more to you 
But um, if you know your Pantone color or you're going to pick a Pantone color from here because you have a swatch palette with you and you see a color that you really like, that means that when you go to a printer, you're using that specific ink color rather than using four color process like your home printer does, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, to create a specific color. Like if you're if you wanted to make a, a maroon, you're going to use a lot of a lot of red and black to create that color. But Pantone actually has a mix of colors already made in a specific color that you want. So if you're trying to match like a t-shirt or a piece of cloth, then you can get a Pantone swatch book and put that uh, match that color just like you do at the paint store um, to find the color that you want for your logo. So it's as simple as that. So I've selected my warm gray, click OK, click OK again, and, and again we're going to go to File to Save As, and I'm going to save it as a PNG, so it's transparent background, and I'm going to rename this, my logo name, underscore warm gray 11. All right. Now if you have Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to show you how to do that too. So we'll show you right now how to change that into a different color. Okay, now I have Adobe Illustrator open and I have a file open with my logo. Right now I have it in two colors. I have this um, kind of a lavender color with the uh, warm gray 11. I simply took uh, my branding sheet that has my logos, the different variations I use my logos on, the icons that I use this for like my social media sometimes or um, if I just want to put a little icon on the end of a photograph because I'm also a photographer. And I have the um, all the colors I use for my logo, the um, lavender warm gray 11 and I also use warm gray 1 and a screen of my warm gray which is at 35% tint. And then I have my fonts that I use, they're always there, so I just open it up and I know exactly what font I use for my logos, and then I have my backgrounds already set up, so whenever I'm designing something, all I have to do is open up my branding sheet and pull from this to design um, different marketing pieces for myself. So what I've done is I selected, um, with the selection tool, my logo, and then copy and pasted it onto a new document file. So now I can change the color of my logo. I have to select it. So I can click and drag my mouse across it using the selection tool, which is at the very top of your tools palette. It's the little black arrow. And you click and drag it across your logo, or you can do a command a shortcut, which is Command A, which selects, selects everything on your document. Or you can go to File to, um, I'm sorry, Edit to, is it Edit or, gosh, I do so many keyboard shortcuts I can never remember anymore. Um, yeah, I believe it's object, select, I don't know it's select, ah, here it goes, under select menu, go to all, and you can see the keyboard shortcut command A. I'm sorry, it took me so long to find that. I, it, it really has literally been a decade since I have done this the old fashioned way, which is trying to find everything under the menu. Now I just use those keyboard shortcuts like, you know, like a secondhand nature to me. So anyways, you can go to File to, I'm sorry, Select to All, and we'll select everything on your document. So now we need to open up our um, color palette, and I actually have mine open already, but you can find yours under the Window menu, and then go down to Color. The keyboard shortcut for that is F6, and I'm just going to close it and reopen it so you can see that, popping up. And this will, you can, this is a shorthand way to, if you just want to change your logo to either black or white, they already have these as the default colors um, in the colors palette. And go and select your, your, your logo and click on the black uh, color swatch. And now your logo is in a solid black, so you can use this for like your faxes, uh, on the documents for faxing. Um, if you just want to have um, a solid black logo to use on your, Photographs as a watermark, you can load this into um, Adobe Photoshop as a brush, or you can um, load it in as a preset into your um, preset watermark into your Lightroom program. And then you can also do the same thing to change it to white, but you won't be able to see it because we have a white, the document itself is white. So if you want to make sure that you're changing it to the right color, um, go to your tools palette and select the rectangle tool and just create a rectangle over your logo. 
and um, use your selection tool to go to Object, tr um, Arrange, send it to the back. So now that your logo is going to be on top of this black box. So I'm going to do a Select All to select everything. Use my Shift key to deselect the background. So now only my logo is selected. And I'm going to click on the white box. And now a white color, uh, um, color swatch. And now my logo is in white. You can also go to your swatch palette if you want to have a few more options for colors. Um, you go to Window to Swatches. There is no keyboard shortcut for that one. And in the swatch palette, there automatically comes with a loaded selection of default colors. You have reds, greens, blues, oranges, and yellows. So you can select any of these colors. Whoops. Um, select any of these colors to change your logo to. So I'm going to delete this box so that we can see all these different colors we're changing it to. Oh, I forgot to do this. Okay, now I have a... Let me click on this really quick and change it to a color. I have a line. Um, part of my logo is a, has this little line separating the icon from the text. And um, right now it shows up as a stroke. And you can see that in your um, tools palette, it'll show as a stroke. If I sh switch it to solid, you won't really see the, the line because it, right now it is a stroke line. But I want to make that into an, a solid object so that when I go to change everything, it's changing the solid fill rather than the outline, the stroke. So I'm going to go to Object to expand the stroke and make it a fill instead. So I'm going to deselect stroke, select fill, click OK. So now it should take make everything, oops, let's try that again, didn't do it. Expand, I'm going to select both of them and click OK. All right, there you go. Now it is an object. So it, it is. if you looked at the um, this little icon on the, the stroke and fill uh, icon on your tools palette, you can see the change, and I'm going to hit Command Z so you can see it. It went from stroke, and I go to object to expand, selecting the expansion tool, clicking OK, and you can see that it changed from a stroke to a fill. So now when I select my logo, I can change everything to, oops, make sure that you have fill in the foreground on your tools palette, otherwise it's going to make everything a stroke. But if you have it all selected, right now it shows a question mark because I had two different colors selected on my logo. I have black and then I have this warm gray. Now I'm just going to select a color from the swatch palette. And you can see now that it changes everything into a fill color of whatever I click it on. So I can change any color that I want to. Now you can also select your um, Pantone swatch color in here as well. In the swatch palette, you want to click on this little icon that looks like a bunch of books. It's called the Swatch Libraries menu. You click on that and you go down to um, Color Books, slide over to um, Pantone Solid. I'll select Uncoded. And here, just like in Photoshop, you can see all your um, you can see all the different selections of Pantone colors. If you know which one it is, go to the Find menu and type it in. I use Warm Gray 11. Okay, and I'm going to uh, double click on that and we'll add it to the swatch palette. So I already had it in there. I'll double click on warm gray once you can see how it, once you click on it, it then adds it automatically to your swatch palette. So now I'm going to select my whole logo again and click on my swatch of warm gray one in my swatch palette. And now my logo is a new color. So now you want to save your logo in the, um, in your solid color. I'm going to switch it back to black since the question was how do I switch my logo color to black and white. So now that my logo is in, in, in black, I'm going to go to File to Save As. And I'm going to save my logo, name it, underscore black. And you have different file formats in Illustrator just like you do in Photoshop, but these are specifically for vector-based um, uh, files. Illustrator will save it as a vector, as a vector graphic, so will EPS, .eps .pdf. And um, you can also use SVG, but I never use these because it's just it's not necessary for me. So I use EPS, AI, and PDF as my mainstays for this. You can also export from Illustrator to make a pixelated version of your logo, rasterized version of your logo that um, was compatible for the web. And I go to File to Export to change um, the format file to PNG, which will then make it give you an option to make it a transparent background. 
You can save it as a JPEG, a Photoshop file, or a TIFF file. You also have um, a bitmap image, anything that you need to do. The file format is here for you in, in Illustrator as well. So simply save it as a PNG file if you want to also use um, a transparent background version of it for um, your website. Rename it underscore black and it will automatically select the .png file format ending of that file name for you. And just hit export and make sure you're saving it into the appropriate file folder on your desktop or your external hard drive. I'm going to keep the resolution at 300 dpi. You also have an option to uh, drop it down to 72 or 150. 300 dpi is pretty standard for high resolution um, and 72 dpi is good for web. And then I keep mine as typed optimized and you can either select interlace or not, but I want to make sure that the background is still transparent. If I select white, you're going to get this white, and it gives you a little preview, but it gives you this little white box behind your logo, and I don't want that, especially if I'm using it on my website. So I want to keep it as a transparent background. And I'm going to click OK. And it's as simple as that. Now you have your logo in any color that you want to. Enjoy. Have fun with it.